Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. I prepared nine MS questions that were commonly asked in the examinations. This is to gauge and refresh your knowledge concerning medical surgical nursing topics. After the nine questions, I will provide the correct answer and rationale. You can also try to check in the description below the relevant links for other MS questions and discussions. So get a pen and paper. Let's start. Question number one.
Time's up. Let's now check the answers. For question number one, in the ER, the initial diagnosis of the physician to patient Z is cholecystitis. Nurse Pu notes that the patient has acute pain episodes and anticipates that it is located in the cholecystitis is the inflammation of the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a small organ under your liver that is located in the right upper quadrant. During an acute episode of cholecystitis, the patient may complain of severe right upper quadrant pain that radiates to the right scapula and shoulder. This is determined by the pattern of dermatomes in the body. So the correct answer is letter A. Question number two. Patient M was admitted to the hospital due to a complaint of chest pain and a history of type 2 DM. Nurse Rain checks his medications because the patient was also scheduled for cardiac catheterization. Which of the following medications must be withheld 48 hours before and after the procedure? Metformin needs to be withheld 48 hours before and after cardiac catheterization because of the injection of contrast medium during the procedure. If the contrast medium affects kidney function with metformin in the system, the patient would be at increased risk for lactic acidosis. Letter A and D will be withheld once the patient is on NPO, while regular insulin may be administered if elevated blood glucose levels from infused intravenous solutions occur on the day of the procedure. Question number three. Patient S is undergoing fluid replacement after being burned on 20% of her body 12 hours ago. Her nurse assessment shows a BP of 90 over 50, a PR of 110, and a urine output of 20 ml over the past hour. The nurse reports the findings to the physician and anticipates which of the following order. Note the time and the findings, especially the urine output over the past hour. Fluid management during the first 24 hours after a burn injury generally includes the infusion of lactated ranger's solution. Fluid resuscitation is determined by urine output. An hourly urine output should be at least 30 ml. The patient's urine output is indicative of insufficient fluid resuscitation, which places the patient at risk for inadequate perfusion of the brain, heart, kidneys, and other body organs. Therefore, the physician would prescribe an increased infusion of IV lactated ringer solution. Dextrose in water is an isotonic solution, and an isotonic solution maintains fluid balance. This type of solution may be administered after the first 24 hours after the burn injury, depending on the patient's physiological needs. Blood replacement is not used for fluid therapy for burn injuries. Lastly, administering a diuretic would not correct the problem because it would not replace the needed fluid. Diuretics promote the removal of the circulating volume, thereby further compromising the inadequate tissue perfusion. Question number four. Nurse Cloud is using the rule of nine to assess the extent of burn injury of the patient in the ER. Her findings show that the burn initially affected the entire face and the upper half of the anterior torso, and there were circumferential burns to the lower half of both arms. At the back of the patient, there are subsequent burn injuries to the posterior surface of the head and the upper half of the posterior torso. Which of the following illustrates the extent of the burn injury? These are the percentage in each section for adult. Using the following percentage, the correct answer is 36 percent. If you want more discussion about burn, you can check the link in the description of this video.
The discussion also includes myasthenia gravis and Guillain-Barre syndrome. Question number 5. Patient H is complaining of intense pain in his affected arm that has a cast due to a sustained close fracture. His nurse elevates the limb, applies a cold compress, and administers the analgesic as ordered. These interventions result in a little relief from the patient. The nurse interprets that this pain may be caused by Most pain associated with fractures can be minimized with rest, elevation, application of cold, and administration of analgesics. Pain that is not relieved by these measures should be reported to the physician because the pain unrelieved by medications and other measures may indicate neurovascular compromise. Since this is a new close fracture and cast, infection would not have had time to set in. Therefore, the correct answer is letter A, impaired tissue perfusion. Question number 6. In the ER department, Nurse Lindsay is assessing a patient who has sustained a blunt injury to the chest wall. Which of the following signs would indicate the presence of a pneumothorax? The patient has sustained a blunt or a closed chest injury. Basic symptoms of a closed pneumothorax are shortness of breath and chest pain. A larger pneumothorax may cause tachypnea, cyanosis, diminished breath sounds, and subcutaneous emphysema. Hyperresonance also may occur on the affected side. A sucking sound at the site of injury would be noted with an open chest injury. Therefore, the correct answer is letter D. Question number 7. Patient D was diagnosed with diabetes insipidus after several diagnostic tests. Nurse Thunder assesses the patient and notes which of these symptoms is the most indicative of the disorder. Diabetes insipidus is characterized by a hyposecretion of the antidiuretic hormone and the kidney tubules fail to reabsorb water. Polydipsia and polyuria are classic symptoms of diabetes insipidus. The urine is pale and the specific gravity is low. Anorexia and weight loss also occur. If you want to know more about diabetes insipidus, and the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, you can check their link in the description below. Question number 8. Patient C is currently experiencing neutropenia as a result of chemotherapy. Nurse Ku develops a plan of care that must include For a neutropenic patient, meticulous hand hygiene education is important. Not all visitors are restricted but the patient is protected from persons with known infections. Fluids should be encouraged and it is not advisable to isolate the patient. Question number 9. An oxygen delivery system is prescribed for a patient with COPD to deliver a precise oxygen concentration. Which oxygen delivery system would the nurse anticipate to be ordered? A non rebreather mask provides the highest concentration of oxygen. It is most frequently used to a patient with deteriorating respiratory status who might require intubation. The oxygen concentration varies for the face tent, but it is useful instead of a tight-fitting mask for the patient who has facial trauma or burns. An aerosol mask is used for the patient who requires high humidity after extubation or upper airway surgery, or for the patient who has thick secretions. Finally is the Venturi mass, which has a high-flow oxygen delivery system, and its operation is based on a mechanism that pulls in a specific proportional amount of room air for each liter of oxygen delivered. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Thank you for listening. I hope you learn and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.